In this report, did I lie to you about engine fuel consumption at idle? The better, perhaps, to persecute engine auto stop-start systems, as alleged by more than one of you. The ugly truth on this coming up, and I've got the sword ready and I'm happy to fall on it if necessary. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au, the place where Aussie new car buyers save thousands off their next new cars. Hit me up on the website for that. At idle fuel consumption coming right up. But first, let us slice and dice those of you nutty enough and brave enough to publicise your unique views. The crazy brave world of the comments feed. Yes. It's actually been a holiday weekend here in Shitsville. Liz Regina the Second's birthday, so happy birthday, Liz. Hopefully, therefore, this oxygenair shook duck nut will attenuate the pain of returning to work on a Tuesday and then being expected to do five days' work in the space of just four. The chick that tried to sell me paint protection had great tits, so I enjoyed the sales pitch very much. Then politely declined. If there's one thing I simply cannot stand, it is the misogynistic objectification of women. Relative pronouns here, so important. It's chick who, not chick that. I mean, chicks haven't been property since shortly after the Ten Commandments were handed down to that, um, that mass murderer. But I do agree that if you are going to be subjected to a sales pitch for all that useless add-on new car crap at a dealership, you know, the paint protection, the saxophone holder, whatever, having that pitch delivered by a Ming Mole with those aftermarket silicon bolt-ons is actually quite enjoyable. The time certainly does pass quicker. And there's no harm, provided you can resist the significant gravitational pull of those aftermarket puppies. Please don't underestimate that. This channel is porn. Thank you very much, Chris. I do try. You can't marry the Sydney Harbour Bridge. She and I are already married. Our daughter, the Anzac Bridge, is about to go to uni and we're planning her 21st birthday party. Don't impinge on my happiness, imposters. I find it continually amazing how the smallest one-liners trigger people to comment. All I said last week was that people should be free to marry whomever and whatever they want by mutual consent. That's it, John. I am going to marry the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Will you be best man? Then I will divorce the old girl and take 50% of the tolls for the rest of my life. Sept. The historical records are actually pretty clear on this. When you look into it, the Sydney Harbour Bridge is actually a Mormon, so it's all good. Coat hanger suitors, therefore, form an orderly queue on the right and tip Joseph Smith on the way end. Polygamy legend, yes. Salt Lake City, here I come. But who am I kidding? I can't even keep one wife happy. None of us can. And the secret, of course, is don't try. There is more energy in a gallon of water than a gallon of gasoline. Also, they say it implodes unlike gasoline. If that is true, it is more efficient to pull than to push. You energy from water nutbags are deeply offended and sorely deluded. We have this thing, you know, it's called science. If you study it, you quickly discover that water has hardly any free energy. This is because water is what gets left over when you burn stuff. Water is therefore not fuel, it's exhaust. It's what gets left over after you burn fuel. In your case, Paul, it certainly does seem more efficient to pull. And perhaps that explains why you've been doing so much of it in the comments feed. I was impressed with your knowledge on cars, not so impressed with your blatant attack on Christians. Small but important point of order on this. Christians are people and I don't attack people. I attack ideas and Christianity is just a big fat load of bad ideas. 
If you are a Christian, you must believe the Bible and the Ten Commandments, stuff like that. It really is not optional. Therefore, you've got to hate fags, women are just property, weapons of mass destruction are okay, and you'll burn in hell for committing thought crime. But if you kill a hundred people and ask for forgiveness right at the end, she's all good. Wipe the slate clean. I like that. It's a collective mental illness. All religions are. Fuck off, potato liquor capital of the universe, or we cut exports of dumplings, vodka and smoking hot chicks to your backwater kangaroo humping society. Hey, he says kangaroo humping society like it's a bad thing. Still, amazing that you remain sober for long enough to hit the keyboard about 132 times and mostly get it right. I stand corrected on this, you know, Per capita vodka consumption is highest in Russia, 17 shots per month per person on average. Poland is actually number two on the getting shit-faced on potatoes hit parade at almost 14 shots per month each. Sorry about that. Polish liquor quaffers. Yes. Please don't hit us with a Polish hottie and dumpling embargo, though. I mean, nobody wants that. Enough of your explosions, FFS. Unsubscribe. What's he talking about? No, I don't know what he's talking about either, mate. America is not a democracy, dumbass. It's a constitutional republic. This is an entirely false dichotomy. It's like saying the sky is not blue, it's air. <laughs> They're not mutually exclusive propositions. Retardistan is, in fact, both a constitutional republic and a representative democracy. The Washington Post has an excellent article defining all of this. Google can find it for you, of course, if you're having trouble sleeping. Relativity played essentially no part in the development of nuclear energy. That is total bullshit. E equals mc squared, Einstein's famous relativity equation, essentially says that mass is just a super concentrated form of energy. It explains the physics of nuclear power and nuclear weapons. In both, the nuclear material loses a tiny amount of mass during reaction. After reacting, the total mass is less, but only slightly. That mass, called the mass deficit, is converted directly to energy using E equals mc squared. A small amount of mass gives you a shit ton of energy, basically. Einstein's famous equation is in the 1945 report by physicist Henry DeWolf Smythe, prepared for the US government to detail the Allied efforts to make the atom bomb during the Manhattan Project. If being the foundational fact upon which all nuclear energy was subsequently developed is the same as, quote, played essentially no part in the development, then, okay, you win. Meanwhile, here on Earth, the discovery of relativity led directly to nuclear energy, which is what I said last week. And now, <laughs> cock of the week. Yes. To state idling all day will cost less than burgers and fries is not accurate. Is he referencing a 50cc lawnmower or dirt bike? Typical V8 platforms idling for the equivalent of one hour equals roughly 33 miles of driving. Engine idle hours add up real quick. Do your own math with fuel consumption and injection strategy. This video is a bash fest of opinions. Im not in favour nor against stop go strategy, but the idling consumption opinion is simply not accurate for on-the-road automobiles. In my report on engine stop-start systems, which could be retitled, They're a Crock of Shit, I did say that idling all day in an average car costs less in dollar terms than a burger and fries. 
So, according to Time Out's list of the best burgers in Sydney, there are 14 establishments in the list, and the cost is roughly 10 to 15 Southeast Asian Schitzvillian shekels per burger with fries. Petrol, gasoline, tomato, tomato is about $1.50 in Schitzvillian shekels per litre. So for my claim to be true, the cost of idling all day has to be under that $10 to $15 best burger threshold. And how do we best assess this? Science, of course. Research on idling fuel consumption was completed in 2015 by Argonne National Laboratory, which was born out of the University of Chicago's work on the Manhattan Project in the 1940s, coincidentally enough. Today, these dudes do scientific research for the US Department of Energy. It's pretty clear that Argonne National Laboratory could do such a mundane assessment with a profoundly high degree of inherent certainty and credibility. So don't take my word for the consumption, take theirs. And the findings were, a modern two litre gasoline engine idling at zero load uses about 0.16 US gallons of gasoline per hour. That's almost bang on 0.6 litres every hour. You could call it 90 cents an hour here in Shitsville to idle your two litre car. So if you parked your two litre car at 8am outside the office and left it idling all day, returning to it at 6pm, this 10 hour idling stint would consume about 6 litres of fuel. That's about 9 bucks worth of fuel, which is below the cost of one of Shitsville's best burgers and fries. As to the other claim, quote, typical V8 platforms idling for the equivalent of one hour equals roughly 33 miles of driving, that's about 53 k's, Argon Labs found that a large sedan with a 4.6 litre engine consumed about 1.5 litres per hour. And I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that this is almost directly proportional. So it's really not too much of a stretch to extrapolate that and say a 6.4 litre Hemi powered Chrysler 300 SRT core will consume, ballpark estimate, 2 litres of fuel an hour at idle. That's mathematically robust. I'd really like to see anyone drive 50 k's on those two litres, as so assertively promised. This is the thing about <coughs> total cocks. You are so sure of yourself, so certain and yet so friggin wrong. This is an increasingly insidious trend in our Western cultures. Just believe anything hard enough and it achieves a certain epistemic validity. Call me old fashioned here, but the objective facts still matter. They really matter. You are not in fact entitled to believe there's accessible spare energy in water or that relativity did not lead directly to nuclear energy. Just as you are not entitled to spew forth uninformed alleged truth about things like fuel consumption at idle. This matters because if you want the Western democracies to remain ahead, they we, we all need to innovate. And the only way we can innovate is by assessing how the world objectively works. It's not enough simply to be confidently wrong. That's something to think about when you're cramming five days work into four. I'm John Cadogan. Thanks for watching.